This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and I'm wanting to go check on our two different fruit trees like the citrus that has fruit on it and the black sapote because they both ripen around the same period like December and January maybe November uh, in some cases it's getting very uh, wild around here which is a good thing um, so yeah that's what I'm gonna go do <clears throat> we've been growing seed grown citrus for three years now well almost three years uh, the trees that are fruiting are all two-year-old trees and um, the citrus had uh, more fruit on it but some of the fruit got sunburnt and so I picked off a lot of it I figured it's the first time they fruited and uh, I wasn't really expecting a huge crop of fruit from the citrus this year uh, I really never expected to be able to grow citrus here in Florida because uh, they just said you couldn't do it but you can you just can't do it the way the citrus people do it which is to um, have glyphosate strips underneath the citrus and mowed grass in between I mean those practices alone will change the pH in your soil so for that reason alone it's I mean it's just idiotic that they continue to do it so I'm not going to go into it deeper than that but we don't have any trouble growing citrus here and um, our citrus are very healthy we grow like blood oranges and finger limes and key limes and pomelos and citron and sweet oranges and I like the sweet fruit we got some or I should say a what is it those cuties I found a seed in a few and I got one tree to grow from that seed so I only buy organic fruit because I just don't buy any other food if it's not certified organic just it's not I don't really want to consume uh, a treasure trove of toxins which is what you're gonna get in a glass of fresh Florida orange juice today everything is so uh, wild and lush looking right now it's just getting towards the end of summer and uh, our mangoes that all froze are now uh, they all died to just above the graph but they are you know not all but we had like 20 trees little trees little trees that froze back at our 31 degrees in areas where the soil was compacted and um, they're all they're all coming back uh, above the graph so that's good and I've made some improvements in areas those areas uh, so uh, we hopefully won't have a repeat offense of that because the cold really didn't bother anything else except for where these I knew the soil was bad so here's our citrus and you know you can see that our citrus is very healthy and doesn't have green and um, we don't water them but here's the fruit and they look like they have a little ways to go but 
this, there's some sunburn on this one on the top, but it wasn't so bad, so I left that fruit. Same with this. But the fruits, it's, uh, it's looking good. Um, hopefully they'll have um, citrus fruit to taste and hopefully it'll be uh, improved citrus. Anyway, well, I'm going to talk about the black sapotes because the black sapotes, we got uh, about, I don't know, eight of these grafted trees and um, and then I have a couple of uh, seed started trees. These grafted trees, this one has set a small first crop okay first crop and the fruit are getting kind of big uh, they have a ways to go these trees have been in the ground for about eight years or not eight years <laughs> five years five plus years almost six i guess and they were bought from the nursery and it's uh trying to produce or set some more fruit. It seems like it's going to be a continuous fruiting tree here. Um, applying large amounts of compost or manure has greatly uh, increased the amount of fruit set on these trees. And these grafted trees, in particular, were connected to water um, because they started losing their leaves when we didn't have any... Um, it's quite a bit of first, first fruit. Decent sized crop. Um, when we weren't... We didn't have them connected to water and um, uh, it freak, freaked out the uh, money side of my adventure here and uh, so we connected them to a drip and uh, we turn it on in like January 1st as soon as the drought starts and um, uh, that way they don't lose any leaves. I don't think it's even necessary. I believe they could have done just fine without any water. Um, but, in fact, I know they could have. Here's one of those citrus, or not, the mangoes that, you know, died back above the, above the graft line. And this is all the new growth. I never bothered cutting back any of these dead stuff. I figured it could protect the tree while it was still growing. But this, this particular tree, it, Looks like it's gonna have a second crop on it, which would be nice. And here's a seed grown tree, which it's seed from these trees. So it's like probably only three years old and it's already as tall as the grafted tree almost. Um, and these, I don't water anything that's seed grown. Uh, this tree is, very healthy and um, they don't need water. You don't have to water black sapotes. Our citrus, definitely none of it, because you know, all our citrus is seed grown. All our seed grown trees are, have never been watered. We don't water our trees. I just got into a, uh, a, a hole of, information on or fell into a spiral of uh, looking for information on quantum biology and um, uh, water's role and uh, plant health and 
I just was just, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just fascinated by this whole field now and some creature is trying to attack my bananas. Anyway, we have some more, we still have guavas. I can smell them. Little one. Mm, they're so sweet. They're so delicious. It's, um, I've never tasted such sweet guavas before in my entire life. Um, I'm surprised that I like them so much now. Looks like it has another crop on there. It just this tree just never stops. It's just a continuous fruiting tree. And this guava is as sweet as a sugar apple. Just so you know. It's uh, definitely the best guava I've ever tasted. I'm gonna try to go in here and get over to these other Black sapote trees. Mmm, those guavas are good. My skin is so thin. Really amazing, they don't have any fruit flies. Just so sweet. It's like some creature's been living under here. Uh, I've kind of got a uh, sugarcane forest started over here. It looks like the premium sugarcane, too. Good. You know, not all sugarcane is created equal. Here's another mango that had froze back and is coming back stronger than ever. Uh, here's another black sapote. And this one looks like it has a, has a, has a, Okay, first crop, and it's, you know, setting on, producing the second crop. And that's really what we want to do, you know, prove that biological farming is superior to all other forms of farming here for Florida. Um, I've been growing black sapota trees for 10 years, and this is the first place I've seen where we have a continuously fruiting black sapotes. Uh, so you fruit year round, it looks like. Um, this tree is so covered in fruit that uh, it's kind of scary t to me that um, the branches haven't started like breaking because uh, you can see all the fruit. It's like there's fruit on the ground, there's fruit here. Um, I really love black sapotes. It's like one of my favorites. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that I, seems like all the fruits that I said I really didn't like, like guavas and black sapotes before, 
are all now some of my favorite fruits. They just... Nobody grew them for flavor. And that's kind of what we focus on. Uh, we want really flavorful fruit. And I see that. And it just, the fruit is like, I mean, you see all these fruit? It's like, they're like, there's just, the tree is so overloaded with fruit. It's just amazing to me. I really just, I just get amazed by this place every single day. Um, I don't look like they're ready. Uh, oh, we, I don't plant a lot of my black sapote trees because I'm just worried about having a huge forest of black sapote trees that, because uh, these trees get huge. And um, so I've kind of held back from planting a lot of seeds. I, we do grow some of our black sapotes from seeds, like I showed, but, um, yeah, it's looking good. What was that fruit on the ground I saw? Where were you? Oh, it looked like it was underripe fruit. These are Bernicke or Reineke, and we have both of them. And then we have two trees that were always like the slowest grower, growing ones. This was like a, at an angle and it was mowed and the, the soil was really bad here, but um, I see it's got some blooms on it, so. Usually my black sapotes, when they had fruit, they just had not bloomed again before, or bloomed again. And um, that's not the case. It's, they're like repeat bloomers, continuous bloomer. Oh, this one does have fruit on it. This is the other one that wasn't that um, robust. And these fruit look different than the others. Look more. Oh, and it has uh, bloom and this weird shaped fruit. So maybe this is one of them. Maybe these are a different, these were a different type. More like a flying saucer. I have a couple more large trees that are over there. Uh, but I don't know if I'll walk over there. Hello, little frog. Oh, this uh, little uh, Garcinia brasiliensis has more fruit on it. Oh, it looks like it's definitely a continuous bloomer. This really kind of scares me how much fruit we're going to have here because it just keeps Growing and growing and growing and more stuff is fruiting and fruiting and fruiting. This is that um, red flower Garcinia I had. I just keep hoping that I'll come by here and see a, you know, a red fruit or something. But more and more flowers, but I don't see any.
Even though there is seedlings underneath it that I'm sure are from this tree. So I see there's uh, Adam Oyas. I came through here yesterday and I kind of like went like this on the grass and I discovered several of my Adam Oyas that I've planted. There's a Luke's Garcinia right there, I can see. They're popping up above the weeds. The trees pop up above the weeds. Let's see that. Cacao. And a butternut tree doing quite well. Wasn't sure if that could grow here. One of our rarest trees. Cacao. So those cacaos were all individual cacaos, but then here I planted a pot of cacao. Out. so more than one tree in one hole and these trees are like three times the size of uh, or five times the size of the the individually planted trees um, you know these were started this year and we don't water our seed growing trees and so they've never been given any water it's to watering trees is completely unnecessary here completely So I came over here and I was like looking for Adamoya, my little Adamoya seedlings, because I love Adamoya fruit. It's one of my favorite, or it probably is my favorite Anona, even more so than Rolinia. I like Rolinia fruit, but I really love Adamoya fruit. Um, but that, you know, my tastes change. <laughs> so what I like today, maybe not what I like next year or as much. Bananas for days. Forgot I have to go pick that bunch I saw back by the cashew tree. It's probably getting close. Um, Thankfully, I haven't encountered any snakes on my hikes through this wilderness, but knock on wood. But I kind of know when not to walk around. It's been raining a lot. Not a good idea. So water moccasins go on a move, go on the move, and uh, I need to let them give them the respect that they kind of deserve. <clears throat> but when it's dry and there's no ponds for them to go in between, I feel confident that I am not going to encounter any knock on wood. Right? Our chacha trees are all they're, they're like getting big and I'm kind of scared about how much fruit I'm going to have. Oh, I want to talk about Tropical Fruit Hunter fruit. I am very impressed with the quality of their fruit. I just want to say that and um, uh, maybe... Maybe they would be somebody interested in 
selling our fruit, but we'll see. I just, I totally enjoyed their, their fruit. They didn't send anything crappy because a lot of this fruit I've seen people selling is like not up to par and I bought some and it hasn't been up to par but tropical fruit hunter fruit out of Miami I'm kind of impressed with them they seem to have a very high standard which is kind of what I like And I'm sure these places would like to sell organic or biodynamic certified fruit. So this is this cacao that I thought had set fruit, but it's kind of a tiny little uh, tree, to, but it should be setting fruit. I'm not gonna worry about it. Do it when it do, does it. And if it doesn't, one of its brothers will. Sisters. So this Garcinia intermediate tree is like, it had a lot of fruit set this time again, or, you know, more than before. Um, uh, it's going to be nice to be getting all this Garcinia fruit year round. Um, you really can't stop this from growing since it doesn't be depend on me to on me for its survival. I planted this place to grow on its own and the citrus is popping up above the grass and Stuff is growing, stuff is fruiting, and everything's looking good. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I hope you have a good day.